Hey, what's good everybody? Peace to everybody and I hope you guys are doing well. Lockdown day 44 and today we're going to just plateau now. So I'm not really going to give you that much because I've said my piece on football. I've warned everybody and whether you like it or not, all I've done is I've told you the truth. Yeah. So it's really about time to see how these people are going to react. And we're hearing varying degrees of irresponsible acts and quotes from various people and other people just plainly saying it's not workable but I've been saying that for weeks I'm just sort of sitting back and looking at these people thinking look I'm not a member of the Football Association and I could have tell you that this thing was a can of worms it was square plugs in round holes you're trying to do the impossible and you're also trying to go against the well-being of your footballers and their families. So with all that taken into consideration, when are you going to stop to actually think about what's important for the safety of people's lives rather than the entertainment factor that's going to ensure that you can pocket enough profitability to keep yourself happy? So twofold, let's go on to the positive side. The positive side is Merkel has given permission for her people to start working themselves through and getting the Bundesliga going. This is on top of them having three infected last week, 10 infected yesterday, and I'm hearing that number's increasing today, but we don't have an official number. Now, you guys are probably saying, why haven't you given them a bollock in Apollo? Why, why aren't you saying anything? Why? Because from day one, when they had the virus in Germany, they have been, by far, along with South Korea, the most tested country in Europe. So not only do they know how to manage it and have been manage it, but it's done in such a way that didn't you see how quickly those three infected and the seven infected came about? They knew because they had already had everything in place. They had mobile apps in place. They had testing in place. They can then backtrack and see who's infected. So they can lock it down pretty easily. The UK have never been able to do that. The UK, are not, they're not using tracking technology with mobile phones, although they're talking about it. They've not been testing anywhere near any other country in Europe. So to even think about putting football out there, when we don't have the system in place to make that work is laughable. So for Germany to put out that there's going to be football that's going to be returned later next month, all games are going to be played behind closed doors. Well, they can use that because logistically they've done the right thing in order to make that happen. You do what you need to do, then you're in a place, you're in a good place to make that happen. And Already you're talking about 10 players, well, there's more than 10 players now, but those players can't play. <laughs> those players can't play. And if you talk about people who've come out of recovery of COVID-19, they are saying that they're tired and they're worn down, yeah? Because their body has done so much to fight this thing off. So it's not like you've got the flu or it's not like you've got a little issue or a little back pain and then you get a couple of massage, bit of acupuncture and then jump Bob's your uncle you can play on Tuesday night it don't work like that this thing takes weeks of recovery so already you're alienating a lot of players that can't come and then can't play so this is very difficult but listen well done Germany and looking forward to seeing how far you're going to take this now on the other end of the spectrum the UK the place with by the way um, I was talking to someone in the chat and it was my knowledge that well, it's everybody's knowledge that the UK is the highest death toll in Europe. But I I normally do the death rate numbers and percentages of, of the people who have caught it. And I knew that we were running behind France at 13.7% death rate. It's gone up to 15 and, and France is 14.9. So it's official now. We have the highest death rate in Europe as well as the most. And look, a lot of people might say, yeah, that's because we've got a more population. It ain't that much. You know, 65 million odd 
it ain't that much different to the 50 or 60 million in other European countries, especially Germany, Italy, Spain, France, etc. There ain't that much of a difference. All it just means is we're starting to see a true reflection. But I must stick up for the UK in one respect because some countries only produce numbers that they've had in hospitals. The UK, it, the UK's number is a coalition of every single um, fatality in the UK. So that that's the only difference there. That's where I will question it. That's where I will say, actually, well, the number is high because of this. Yeah. So I can't really sort of look at everything on one side. There's more to the numbers. And I would advise you guys to also to do your research on that. Yeah. Um, so it might look a bit more bad than what it does on the cover, but that's not really how it all is. But the bottom line is, yesterday I explained in my video various things. I'm just going to summarise because I'm done talking about this all the time. But basically the doctors are saying it's not workable. The players are saying that some some of the players are saying that they don't want to come back and fear their families. Some of the clubs are saying that neutral grounds won't work for them. Everything, there's a stopgap which is holding this thing back from happening and they have to make a decision now in fact next week monday they're putting it to vote and if the vote goes nay then the season most likely would be cancelled if the vote goes yay and all clubs agree to neutral grounds all players agree to come back all the doctors well i, I i'm not even sure the, the doctors because it's the lack of testing really and Boris Johnson came out today and said that he promises, now he's hitting the 100,000 tests per day, he's now promising 200,000 tests per day. So there's a lot of things that we can look at this to say, well, yes, I can see it working, but you don't understand the logistics. The logistics is they have to get going now. They have to get back in training now, today, in order to get fit enough to start playing on the 1st of June. And if they miss that boat, yeah, the crucial window, if they miss that, then it's not going to happen. It really isn't. Because then you're opening up all them can of worms which I talked about in yesterday's video. So that's where we are, guys. The UK are not in a position where they can push it, but they are going to try and push it. Make no, make no bones about it. They're going to try everything they can to get this thing off the ground because as Tony and Bertram have both alluded to, there's so much money in here. And even though they're going to lose a lot, and look, they're only talking about the teams are going to lose gate money and concessions. Yeah, people like me who go to the stadiums, they're going to lose all that money and that's a lot of money. But what they want to ensure is that the TV money stays intact. Because like I said to you before, if there's no football, Sky, BT, all them people can say, well, look, guys, we gave you 5.1 billion for the premiership deal. The fact that you didn't finish 20% of the season left, we're going to take 20% of that fund, which is a billion. We're going to need that money back. They are within their rights to do that. And the reason why most of this narrative is let's play football, let's get it back, Let, let's rush to get this thing happening, is because the league doesn't want to give that money back to Sky. Yeah, because you're taking money away from the league, you're taking money out of the clubs. The clubs are already suffering at the, the, with the amount of millions they're losing on gate money. To, to ask them for part of that TV deal money back, that's going to hurt. Because that's a 94.1 million across the board. And then appearances and bonuses go on top of that. So you could, if you're a club like Arsenal, you could make about 120 million on TV money. But the base level is 94.1 million. And if you're going to give 20% of that back, you're talking about 18 odd million that you're going to have to give back. They're already struggling for money. They're already struggling because of, of loss of, of earnings and, and incomes and everything. And, and like I said, one thing I talked about yesterday when I, when I said that the lower division players have gone on furlough and if you take them off furlough, then they don't get that rebate. Yeah, you forfeit the rebate. So they have to keep the players off. That is going to be madness. But not only that, but guess who else is on furlough? The medical staff, the canteen people, the people who wash the kits, all of these people are on furlough. Most of the people on all the teams, I think some teams haven't done it, 
But the majority of teams in the Premiership, including Arsenal and Chelsea, have put their backroom staff on furlough. So guess what? You can't get those people back either. Because if you do, you forfeit the benefits of, of furlough itself. So this thing is mad. <laughs> they, listen, I don't know how they're going to work this, but I know the government also wants football back. Boris Johnson made a statement yesterday in terms of we need football, we need something to aspire to, we need entertainment, we need something British, yeah? That's the way he looks at it. He's like, we need to get something back to tell us that we're getting through this. So he's looking at football to do that. But I've noticed one thing, all the other sports, you know, rugby, cricket, Formula One, all them other sports, they're just like, uh-huh, all right, you, you do you, you go and do your thing and we'll just sit back and see what happens. Because like I said, if something goes wrong, who's going to take the blame? Yeah? If you're talking about something happens and a player gets ill, very ill, to the point where what we don't want to even discuss happens, who's going to take the blame for that? Boy. Nobody. So this is the reason why you see a lot of these associations, these sporting associations, they can hear the Premier League rumbling because... Big money in the Premier League. But nobody wants to take the responsibility. And I think if football can do that and come back, and as Tony Cox alluded to, the UFC in the States, that's going to be big over there. Although uh, we're yet to really see where the NBA is going. Remember this, this month we're supposed to be in the playoffs right now. Yeah, Final Four was supposed to be um, done. March Madness, that, that was supposed to be over, which is cancelled. Yeah, and we're supposed to be in the playoffs right now. But we still don't know what's happening in the NBA. Don't worry about the NFL. That's September. That's a long way. Yeah, and they didn't even like playing preseason games anyway. They were trying to get rid of that shit from a long time. So don't worry about the NFL. The NFL are fine. The NFL can actually delay the season into October because the NFL have always been trying to extend the, the length of the season. We used to have the Super Bowl in the first week of January. Now it's being delayed and pushed back and back. So d d don't worry about that. But I think as far as football goes, if you really do want to finish, then you can sacrifice next season as, uh, next season as much as you want. Because it doesn't really matter when you start next season because you can just cramp up the schedules. You can get rid of the FA Cup. You can get rid of the League Cup. You get rid of all them Dibby Dibby Cups. And then you can just bite-size the season. That's easy to do. But right now, the clock's ticking and you're on a timetable. Next week, Monday is the meeting, guys, so key into that. And listen, hashtag stay home, hashtag with me, peace, and I'm out.